Hello there. Um, in this video, I am going to walk through all of the settings and the menu options on the new DJI goggles. So if you're wondering why you're looking into the, the, the blackness of space, it's because I've got a camera pointing into the lens. So what I'm going to do is get them turned on so you can see what we're looking at. So we're going to fire them up and let them connect to the Mavic. I'll have to adjust the camera then slightly just to make sure it's getting the right view. So there we go. So we're connected into the Mavic now. And as you can see, the OSD has come up and we've got a, a list of options. So looking at the front screen, at the top left hand side, you've got the aircraft status. Obviously for me, I've got a compass error because it's in the house at the moment. Bottom left, you've got the vertical speed, horizontal speed, distance and uh, height. Along the top, along the right hand side, you've got the aircraft sat count, um, the goggles information, the... Uh, the amount of time I've been flying, you've got unlocked or locked, you've then got the battery status of the aircraft and the battery status of the goggles. Along the bottom you've then got the, the menu that shows the camera settings, so the ISO and the live view status telling us the quality of the feed and then the three options up the right hand side at the bottom are the camera, the menu and the flight modes. So looking at them first, we're on the camera menu at the moment. If we left and right swipe on the touchpad, we can drop into camera settings, record, so that would record the video to the SD card on the camera, or we can take a still. So if I tap that, take a still, it takes a still shot, and it shows us it's just done that. If I go to video, tap, it will start recording video, and if I tap again, it will stop. And then if I swipe back, we can go into the camera menu option. This now will let us select the option for photos, video and the exposure. So if we look at photo first, we can then set things like capture mode, um, the types of JPEG plus RAW for instance, and all of those settings. Sorry, I just need to move things over a bit here because I have blocked myself off on the button. You've got your widescreen mode, your modes for the, your white balance, and your, your output type. If we then go back, we can go into the video mode, select that, where we can select the camera resolution. So we can select 4K, 2.7K, 1080p, 720p. Now, some of these modes are not available in all of the live viewing modes. I will come to that more in a minute. You've also then in video got your options like your format, your NTC, NTSC PAL and all your other options. Going across to exposure, you can then set the exposure from auto to manual and then you can adjust your manual exposure settings to whatever you want whilst on the goggles. And you can scroll up and down through the exposure settings as you can see we're coming up there now and if I drop the you can see we're setting we can set the shutter speeds and flick through them and as you can see we're coming back alternatively we can come back and go back over to auto Going then up to the next menu, it takes us to the quick settings menu, really. So what we have then is settings, uh, auto takeoff, HDMI, playback and HD. If we look at the HD one first, because there's quite a bit to talk about on this one. So we have th three modes you can use the live feed with, with the goggles. So the first is the smooth mode, which is 720p, 60 frames a second. The next mode is the HD mode, which is 1080p, 30 frames a second. And the third mode is keep current mode. What keep current will be is 720p, 30 frames a second. Now, the top two modes, the smooth mode is what DJI recommend for the lowest latency link. So although it's slightly lower resolution, it does have 60 frames a second. The HD mode 
is the 1080p mode which is really really clear it's very very crystal clear in my opinion um, even compared to the 720p mode it's really bright to see now these top two modes introduce some limitations on what you can record in both the smooth mode and the HD mode you are limited to recording at 1080p on your aircraft's SD card the reason is that it needs to change the output to match the goggles to give you the best quality feed so again in HD mode and smooth mode you're limited to 1080p you cannot record in 2.7k or 4k in keep current mode what that does is ignores the live feed option and allows you to set the camera to whatever setting you want to so you can use it in 4k you can use it in 2.7k um, you can change between the top two modes whilst in flight so um if we were what were we in at the moment if we go to hd mode hit confirm and then come out we can see we're in 1080p 30 frames a second if i go back into the menu oh sorry wrong one too far go back over to hd select smooth mode click confirm it will then switch over to the 720p 60 frames a second as I was saying just now though 4k recording is not available in these modes so if I do go into video if I then select video if I select 4k it will not record in 4k it just will not do it no matter what you tell it to try to do it won't do it the only way you can would be to go back into the quick menu change the HD mode to uh, keep current and that would then open up the other settings the only thing I have found about that is you normally have to reboot the goggles before you can do it if you're using your live app on your phone as well it won't let you select the 4k or 1080p it just disappears when you've been on the smooth mode or the HD mode to get it back you turn the goggles off and then suddenly those settings reappear so if you do want to find your 4k and you've already gone into keep current turn your goggles off you'll find the settings will reappear when you turn your goggles back on in the keep current mode they will remain playback allows you to play back either your SD card footage so you can take your SD card out of your aircraft and put it into the goggles and view it on the Mavic you can also play back your footage wirelessly over the OcuSync feed so you would got your SD card is in my craft right now this is some test flying I did yesterday I can highlight one of these hit play and it is playing back this live feed footage via the OcuSync wireless signal so it's a very cool feature if you're out in the field you're actually able to play back your footage straight away if you want to just have a look at what you've done uh, and how it's behaved as you can see in this footage here some of this was me playing i can't remember what mode i'm in here if i'm in i must be in head tracking from the look of it um if i scroll there's some footage here i can't remember which of these is um all in head tracking mode let's have a look at that one so look no that was just me hovering i think um but yeah, so it does allow you to play back your footage, as I said, really quickly and instantly. So it's, it's very good, actually. It really is. It's a very nice feature. The second option is demo videos. Um, when I checked, there's nothing in there yet when I had a quick look on my goggles. Moving over to HDMI, obviously it allows you to plug in your HDMI device. You can use up to a 1080p 60 frames a second connection. So off an Apple TV, off your iPhone, you can plug your HDMI into the little socket on the bottom and it plays back really well, really crystal clear video. Moving over to the takeoff, what that does will allow the aircraft to auto take off. So when you do that, the aircraft will auto take off up to 1.2 meters. I'm not going to do it now because I'm in the house, um, but it is nice and easy. You don't have to do it from the RC. You can do it straight from the goggles. Finally, then it goes into the main settings menu. So if I enter this, this brings us into the settings menu, which gives us the eco option, which you can turn on or off. You've got your linking mode to link it to the aircraft. 
So if I go back into that, you've got quick linking and advanced linking, depending on which mode you want to set it to. So if you go into advanced linking, it'll then allow you, it depends if you want to set the goggles as like two pairs of goggles, one pair of goggles. You'll have to go into the manual and read this section because there's a couple of different methods to doing it, basically. The next option is brightness, so you can adjust the goggles brightness. You can then go down to volume and adjust the volume on the goggles. Oh, sorry, I came out. So that's the brightness, down to the volume. You've next got the option to calibrate the goggles IMU. So that isn't your aircraft, that's to calibrate your goggles so they know which way you're pointing when you're using the head tracking, basically. Next option below that is reset all settings. You've got then format SD card, language and tutorials, basically. That's the, for that menu down there. The next menu above that is the flight modes. So if you go into the flight modes, it allows us to select the aircraft modes that are available to you. So we have tap fly, active track, terrain follow, tripod mode, cinematic mode, and fixed wing mode. So it allows you to put your aircraft into the flight modes without actually doing it on the RC. Stepping back from the next we have the sort of quick mode that gives us the gimbal options. So you enter this by two swipes down on the touchpad on the side and it gives us another few options. These are to enter the full screen mode. So if I enter that, it takes away the whole OSD. The OSD is gone out the window. It's not there anymore. To get out of that, you would just hit the back button and it takes us out. Scroll down again. It gives us the option of the head tracking flight so what that does is instead of using the gimbal yaw it uses the aircraft yaw to go left and right so pitch is still the gimbal pitch up and down but yaw is controlled by turning the aircraft left and right the next option then is head tracking gimbal which means it will only move the gimbal through its entire range so if you turn your head left the gimbal will your left turn your head right the gimbal will your right but only up to the limits now i'm going to select this mode a minute because there's something i want to show you now if i do this i'm going to probably get myself into a bit of a mess because i'm going to have to move the goggles but we will see so we're going to go into the head tracking gimbal mode I've selected that and my Mavic gimbal has then reset to there. When you do this, there is a little marker that comes up on the end of the arrow that shows you the direction compared to north to show you which way your goggles are pointing. So if I turn the goggles slightly, which yours the um, gimbal, you will see a little black line appears like a little arc off the end of the arrow. Let me just turn that with it. It's quite hard to see. There it is there, and it's showing you that it's gone that way. Oh, let me just click back on that. And then it's not the easiest thing to show you. There you go there. So you can see the arrow's gone down on the end of the other uh, sorry the arc has gone down. And then if you want to know where your nose line is, you would just come back and adjust it until it went back to the center or if you went the other way it would pitch it the other way now that is how you figure out where your head is in relation to being center of the nose of the aircraft however to be honest i found it a bit cumbersome i'd like a bit more of a bigger arc or something like that something across the top would be a bit nice or a new way of showing it i found it a bit difficult i didn't even see it the first time i flew i missed it but that's the head tracking mode with the gimbal swiping down it gives us the end the option then is to reset tracking mode or reset motion control so if you've lost your orientation and you're not sure where you want to be sent you know putting everything back to where it should be with regards to the head tracking if you tap that it does it and it puts the camera back center and it puts it to where you are at that moment in time it would be nice to have that option as well on a c button on the mavic if we could put that on one of the c buttons that would be really good it would be a really nice feature to be able to just press the c button and reset it going back down into the menu you've then got portrait mode sorry uh go that again 
Can I enter it? There we go. Enters portrait mode. Scroll down. Tap it again. Takes us out of portrait mode. And finally, the other option is gimbal forward down, but it won't let me do that at the moment because of the settings up. And that's it for the basic walkthrough. Um, overall, I am really, really impressed with these goggles, actually. Um, just giving a couple of seconds to talk on it. The image quality is very, very good indeed. Um, I prefer the 1080p mode over the 720 mode myself. Um, I, I think it's absolutely crystal clear. It really is absolutely crystal clear. There's a couple of little tweaks I think they could probably do to the software. Just make a little things a little bit easier. A bit like that arc. I find that a little bit difficult to see compared to where the nose is. Um, obviously in the head tracking gimbal mode. Sorry, in the head tracking flight mode. So what I'm talking about here is this one. There. When you yaw your head left, the aircraft rotates left, but it acts actually like a uh, yaw stick. So if you turn your head 10 degrees to the left, the aircraft doesn't turn 10 degrees and stop. It keeps turning until you go back to the position you were in when you started the head tracking. So it acts like a yaw stick. You move left to the, the centre, it goes left, you move right, you go right. I think they could add a third mode where if you turn your head 10 degrees, the aircraft rotates 10 degrees. It doesn't keep rotating like it does. It almost a mimic mode. It mimics your position rather than uses it as a yaw stick. Um, but yeah they're, they're really quite clever flight modes they really are and if you want to turn them off so you go back in you can see it's highlighted blue i just tap it again and that turns the flight mode off um that's about it i think i've walked through all of the settings now um that's all the important stuff overall thank you for watching i'll do another video again soon